For a very long time, it was always assumed that the number of brain cells that you were born with was a predetermined amount, and that while you could certainly lose brain cells due to old age, brain damage, or poor life decisions, you couldn't get any more. Well, in 1965, a scientist named Joseph Altman proposed to have evidence to the contrary. Neurogenesis, or the generation of new fully functional neurons from neural stem cells, is exactly this evidence. Now, in all organisms with neural systems, neurogenesis undoubtedly happens in development. I mean, you know, you just start out as a sperm and an egg, and those brain cells in your head have to come from somewhere, right? Well, what I'm going to be talking about is something called adult neurogenesis, the creation of new brain cells during your adult life. Although first presented in the 1960s, the idea didn't really catch on until the 80s and 90s, mostly due to better scientific methods by which to actually you know, prove that neurogenesis happens. Uh, but it has since then grown into one of the biggest topics of study in neuroscience today. Neurogenesis can occur throughout the entire lifespan of an individual, but it doesn't happen everywhere, only in a few specific areas of the brain. Some have been extensively proven and are now widely accepted as sites of neurogenesis, uh, while others have only had preliminary evidence shown and are merely suggestive or probable. Some of these include the cerebral cortex, or the outer layer of the brain critical to things like planning, perception, thinking, and cognition. The cerebellum, uh, this, this kind of lump in the back of the brain important for motor control. Uh, the olfactory bulbs for processing smell information. And more recently, in 2014, the striatum, a set of nuclei involved in motivated behaviors, habits, decision-making, and reward perception. While neurogenesis has been shown to occur in, or at least suggested to occur, in many of these areas in mammalian species, very few of them have been shown in humans. And so lastly, the brain region, which will be the focus of this video, because it's where most of the research is done, is the hippocampus which is a key brain region in the medial temporal lobe and component part of what is referred to as the limbic system, which is a large group of brain regions collectively responsible for things like emotion, motivated behaviors, and memory. The hippocampus is a region fundamentally responsible for long-term memory formation and spatial navigation. So, how does neurogenesis happen? Well, it all starts with neural stem cells, which, like other stem cells, have the potential to become a wide variety of specific cell types depending on the cellular and biomolecular environment that they find themselves in. Now this is important in the brain because neurons themselves don't actually split and divide into further neurons like most other cells can into other cells. And just like the creation of new neurons during development when you were still growing inside of your mother, these new neurons, once created, can migrate to a destination, fully mature, and then integrate with current circuits. These stem cells can also self-renew to make even more stem cells, and they tend to cluster together in what are called neurogenic niches. So one example of a neurogenic niche uh, would be the dentate gyrus in the hippocampus. Depending on the surrounding chemical environment and neural activity level, cells that surround this neurogenic niche will send molecular signals uh, to stimulate, regulate, or inhibit the division, migration, and maturation of adult neurons from neural stem cells. And these can be things like neurotransmitters, like GABA or glutamate, hormones, growth factors, cytokines, or even drugs. Now, because changes in the activity of the brain can induce neurogenesis, and because how you live your life and what you do can change your brain activity, there are many things that you can do in person, or things that can happen to you, uh, that have been shown to either increase or decrease the amount of neurogenesis that occurs in your brain. Things like exercise, stress, aging, and a lack of good sleep. But the big question on everybody's mind who studies this is, what is neurogenesis for? Now, because most of neurogenesis studies happen in the hippocampus, and the hippocampus is necessary for learning and memory, most theories of neurogenesis function have something to do with learning and memory. So why might a constant flow of new brain cells in a learning and memory region be necessary? Well, new neurons might be integrated into new memories, allowing you to form new memories without losing the old ones. Or that the integration of new cells allows the existing memories to be perceived as distinct from one another instead of some hazy blur of events. The new cells might be a kind of separation mechanism for overlapping memories. <clears throat> Regardless of what the functional role of naturally occurring hippocampal neurogenesis is in learning and memory, adult neurogenesis 
is a very powerful discovery because it means that there may be a potential in using it as a therapy to repair an organ that once damaged, for the most part, remains damaged. It might, in the future, be used as a means of recovery from brain damage. What if we could find some way of getting neural stem cells to a damaged brain region and then get those stem cells to mature into healthy brain cells allowing for functional recovery?